I'm gonna start with Jesus every day. Moment by moment in work and play. I'm a start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Hello boys and girls, welcome to Starting with Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today, Miss Michelle is going to be telling us some of the signs that Jesus gave us so that we can be ready when he comes. We also remind, want to remind you that we have a story time that's going on right now and you can check it out at startingwithjesus.com. Miss Kara is telling us a story about a little boy named Satu who has some strange visitors on his island, so check it out. But before we get to any of our program, let's start with some singing. And our first song this week is going to be called Look for the Waymarks, which is something we should be doing, right? Looking for those waymarks of Jesus' is coming. A waymark is a sign. So that's what our story is about. So we're going to sing about the signs of Jesus coming. Look for the waymarks as you journey on. Look for the waymarks passing one by one. Down through the ages, past the kingdoms far. Where are we standing? Look the waymarks are. Look for the waymarks, the great prophetic waymarks. Down through the ages, past the kingdoms far. Look for the waymarks, the great prophetic waymarks. The journey's almost o'er. First the Assyrian kingdoms ruled the world, then Medo-Persia's banners were unfurled, and after Greece held universal sway. Rome seized the scepter. Where are we today? Look for the waymarks, the great prophetic waymarks. Down through the ages, past the kingdoms far. Look for the waymarks, the great prophetic waymarks. The journey's almost o'er. Down in the feet of iron at the plague, weak and divided. What will the next great glorious drama be? Christ and his coming and eternity. Look for the waymarks, the great prophetic waymarks. Down through the ages, past the kingdoms far. Look for the waymarks, the great prophetic waymarks. The journey's on.
When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his loved and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. He will gather, he will gather the gems for his kingdom, all the pure ones, all the bright ones, his loved and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Little children, little children, who love their Redeemer, are the jewels, precious jewels, His loved and His own. Like the stars of the morning, His bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for His crown. Welcome back, boys and girls, to our nature lessons. I want to have a prayer with you and then talk. Let's pray. Father in heaven, bless us as we look at the lesson you've put into the trees and into their bark. I ask for that gift in the name of Jesus. Amen. Isn't bark amazing? Have you ever looked at it? And what you may or may not know is that bark has two important layers. There is the outer layer, which is dead. This dead bark plays an important role. It keeps the beetles out. It keeps the bugs out. It keeps the ants out. It stops the animals from digging holes. That's what it's for. It prevents the toxins and the dangers. Why, this dead part does something for the tree. But underneath the dead part, and what you can't see here, because I got this from a dead tree, there's a living part of the bark that is just inside the bark that allows the juice of the tree, the blood of the tree, to climb up and give life to the whole, the whole organism. You know, when I think about the dead part of the tree and the living part, trees need them both. It's a lot like the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, there's a dead part. That's the letter. That's the part that's like written in the Bible. The thou shalt not, one, two, three, four, five. That dead part is real. And then there's a living part. That's the part that's written in your heart. The part that says, love your parents and respect them. Be faithful to your promises. Love and honor the Sabbath. There's a part of the law that's dead, but let's not mock that part. Do you know even the dead part of the law, those Ten Commandments, make life better for people that aren't converted? I mean, the unconverted man that's faithful to his wife has a better life than the one that commits adultery. The man that's not a Christian that steals has a worse life than the non-Christian who doesn't steal. I mean that the man who doesn't follow God, his life is still better if he doesn't murder. What I'm saying to you is just like the bark goes all the way around the tree, in the dead part of the Ten Commandments, they protect us in every direction. But what about that living part? There's not much value in protecting a dead tree. That living part of the law is the part that goes in your heart. And when we accept God's law into our heart and let him write it there by accepting it, by me not just saying, okay, I'll obey it, but saying, thank you, God, for that instruction. I see it's a better way of life. I choose that. That's how we invite him to write the law. And when we follow the law that way, we're like the tree that has that living sap moving up. It's causing our leaves to grow and our branches to expand. Do we need the Ten Commandments? Yes, we need the dead part. That part stops everybody from going the wrong way if they'll listen. And we want the living part, the part that's in our heart. And when we have both of those, we're well protected from the dangers that come our way. Let me pray with you. Father in heaven, I thank you for the bark you put on trees and for the law you've given us. Please use it. We ask in the name of Jesus, amen. Signs of the Times. Have you heard of that before? Uh, it's a magazine 
right? But it's also signs that are happening all around us that show that the time is coming for Jesus to come very soon. Our lesson today is called Signs of Jesus Coming. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus, and thank you that he's going to come back and get us really soon. I can't wait for that day. Please send your Holy Spirit to fill us with your power and your love and your enthusiasm for reaching others for you. In your name we pray. Amen. Jesus and some of his disciples were sitting, do you remember where? On the Mount of Olives. And they came to him with that question. How will we know when the time has come? Do you remember that? And Jesus decided that they needed to know these things. Now, disciples had a lot of questions. Like, when will the temple be destroyed? You said that not one stone will be left upon another. And when will the end of the world be? The disciples would have to tell others the answers to these questions. And Jesus decided to show to them to shine the light on these important questions. And it's important for us to know today as well. Now we're going to just briefly do an overview today. I highly recommend you learn more about these topics. You can go to our website, startingwithjesus.com, and go to Explore the Future and learn more about some of these things if you find them interesting. I think they're really important to learn more about. And today we're just going to do an overview. Some of the things that Jesus told the disciples pertain to the temple being destroyed, and some of them talk about the end of the world. Miss Michelle, how do we know the difference? I'm glad you asked. How do we know the difference? By studying the prophecies, the prophecies in the Old Testament and the prophecies in the New Testament as well. See, Jesus and the Bible in general give signs, but they don't give exact times and dates. We don't know when the exact time and date of Jesus' coming is going to be, but why would he not tell us that? Wouldn't that be convenient? It would be interesting if you went to buy a plane ticket and they're like, well, it'll be about this time. It wouldn't make sense, right? We want to know the time, the date. We want to know what gate. We want to know which number we are to board. But Jesus coming is not like an airplane flight. He wants us to be ready all the time. And these signs, though, are good warnings. Now, the first warning that Jesus gave we're going to talk about is in Matthew 24, verse 45. Matthew 24, verse 45. And he said, no, it's not in verse 45. I think it's verse 4 and 5. Let's try that. Yep, that makes more sense. Commas are important, aren't they? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. To deceive you is to trick you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Now, in Jesus' time, there were many false Christs, weren't there? There were many false messiahs who came and said, Oh, I'm the Messiah, follow me. And there was a lot of different people who followed them. And they would have uprisings against the Romans, and the Romans would kill them all, or would put them in prison, or those things. Those were things were happening when Jesus was here on earth. And they're going to happen once again at the end. In fact, in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, it says that Satan can actually transform himself into an angel of light. And we know that at the end of time, Satan will impersonate Jesus. What does Jesus tell us, though? Don't worry. Jesus gives us just what to do when this happens. That's why it's so important to study these things, right? Matthew 24, verses 23 through 26 tells us what to, have, what to do when we hear someone say, Then, if anyone says to you, Look! there's the Christ. Or there, over there, he's there. Look, look, look. Don't believe them. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders and deceive, if possible, even the elect. What does that mean, even the elect? Even the people who are really close to Jesus and really following him carefully. And maybe they've been Christians for a really long time, or maybe they study their Bible every day. Satan will try to even trick those people. See, I have told you beforehand, this is what we're to do. Therefore, if they say, look, he's in the desert. Come on, let's go check it out. He's there. Do not go out. Or look, he's in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. Do not believe it. For as lightning comes from the east and flashes all the way across the sky to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. 
we're going to know when Jesus is here. And we also know that his feet won't touch the ground. If he's out in the desert, I think his feet are touching the ground or in the inner rooms, right? So the Bible says don't even get curious about these crazy things that don't line up with what the Bible says. Don't even go there. Because if we put ourselves, we're just like asking for Satan to tempt us and to deceive us by even going there. We know how he's going to come, and we don't want to be deceived, right? So don't even get curious about that. Keep reading the Bible and, and believing exactly what the Bible says. After warning about false prophets and false Christ, Jesus gives some more warnings to his disciples. This one's in Matthew 24, 6, 7, and 8. And you'll hear of these following things. Think about if you've heard about these things happening recently. Wars, rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Have there been a lot of wars happening in our... Yes, a lot of wars are happening. <clears throat> and wars that we might not even know about. Maybe we're not having a war right now where you live, but there are wars happening in other places. And not even just wars, but rumors of wars. Countries threatening each other about starting a war, right? Um, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. Do you know what a famine is? When things don't grow well and there's not enough food for people. That's happening in a lot of places too. Once again, maybe not where you live, but even some places in developed countries um, <clears throat> the grocery stores won't be close enough to where people live, and so they're not able to get enough food. Or maybe money is an issue where they don't have enough money to get the food that they need, right? Pestilences. Pestilences are like diseases and things that happen. We know that that's been happening a lot this last year and just in general as well. And earthquakes in various places. And earthquakes are bad enough because they can destroy your home and livelihood, but then afterwards, if you survive the earthquake, it can be really difficult as well. And those are happening places as well. These things would, could make us really fearful. But God says, I'm with you. And it means that I'm coming soon. Wow. It also talks about the signs of Jesus coming in Luke. Luke verse tw chapter 21. So let's go there and see what Dr. Luke had to say about the signs of Jesus coming. Luke 21, verses 12 and 13. But therefore, all these things, but before all these things happen, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Sounds scary, doesn't it? Let's keep reading. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. This is our chance to share Jesus. Therefore, settle in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For, I love verse 15 here, I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You will feel betrayed even by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all for, man's, for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head shall be lost by your patience. Uh, by your patience, possess your souls. Wow. Sounds kind of scary, doesn't it? Miss Michelle wants you to remember a couple of things. God promises to be with you, doesn't he? And it does say that even some people may die, didn't it? It said that right there. But what's the next thing that they're going to see after they die? Jesus' face coming in the clouds of glory. That's the next thing that they're going to see. And that doesn't make death seem as scary, does it? Wow. And Jesus promises that he's going to put those things in our mouth that we need to say, that he's going to be with us, and that he has our best end in mind. He knows what's going to happen in the end, and he can't wait to take us to heaven with him. Now, hundreds of years before Jesus was born, he had told his prophet Joel some signs that would happen before he is his coming. And it says those in the Old Testament, and it also says those in the New Testament. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Let's see if I can find the book of Joel. Daniel, Hosea, Joel. There we go. Joel 2, verse 31. And feel free to pause the video if you can. Pause it to find it too if you want. Or write it down to check it out later. Joel 2, verse 31 says, The signs. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Wow. Let's see if those things happen. 
<clears throat> Jesus said they were going to again in Matthew 24, where he was talking about all the signs of Jesus of his coming. Matthew 24, verse 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Have these hap things happened, Miss Michelle? Well, nearly 2,000 years since Jesus has told these signs, and yes, have, have passed, and yes, three of these have already happened. The first one that's talked about is darkness, right? That it would be dark, a dark day. This happened actually May 1970-80. Check it out in your history book or Google it, right? It was a bright and sunny day when it, when it dawned, but at about noon, it became dark. And it was dark for the rest of the day. Everybody was confused. The school kids went home. The, the animals went back to the barn because they thought it was bedtime, but it wasn't. And when night actually fell, the second sign happened. When the night actually fell, the, whole, the full moon rose, and it wasn't the bright white light like we normally see, right? <clears throat> it was red, just like the sign had said in Joel and Matthew. And the third sign to happen was on November 13, 1833. And that's when the stars fell. People looked out of the night sky here in the U.S. and they watched thousands of falling stars. Folks, these signs are happening all around us and some of them have already happened. Wickedness is increasing and the hearts of many are becoming either colder towards God or warmer towards God. There's not going to be a fence at the end, everybody. You're going to have to choose a side. Jesus' side or Satan's side, and that's what it boils down to. Jesus told his disciples many things about the future, like to leave Jerusalem before it was destroyed. And even after Jesus died, people had the chance to choose his kingdom. The people who chose his kingdom were called Christians. And just as the Bible had predicted, Jesus had predicted, they were persecuted. Some of them were killed. And, and but God also protected many of them as well. And the people who were killed, their stories went out and their blood was seed to many people, and many people grew up as Christians because of the testimony, because of the people who were willing to give up their lives for God. The next thing they see is Jesus, right? About 40 years after Jesus died, um, the Roman army surrounded Jerusalem, just as he had said would happen. And there was a sign. You can check it out in Luke 21, 20 and Matthew 24, 16 to 20. I want to tell it to you really quick, though. The Romans were surrounding the city, and nobody was going to get out, not even the Christians. And definitely the non-Christians weren't going to let the Christians out. The Roman army started to leave. And the people from the city, from Jerusalem, started chasing the Romans. And that was the sign. And the Christians slipped away quietly. The Romans came back and destroyed all the city of Jerusalem and everyone in it. But not one Christian died. God is with us. And he is going to always be with his children. He loves you so much. He doesn't want you to worry about the end of the world. He wants you to be excited for it because it means the beginning of eternal life with him. It's time to review our questions from last week. Let's see if you got those questions right. Shout out to Niagoa, Daniel, Isaiah, Fabulous, Niabue, David, Pook, Kensley, Mia, Elijah, Lizzie, Benjamin, Aiden, Analia, Benji, Caleb, Olivia, Skyler, Arthur, Emery, Zafi, Eben, Mwoch, Nelson, Molly, Bang Ping, Hosanna, Sam, Christian, Ball, Jonah, Kiernan, Sefi, Juliana, Kaishan, Julia, Mal, Chudier, Jessabella, Judah, Ethan, Kevin, Micah, Praise, Benny, Dang, Ariana, Kirsten, Emily, CJ, Nyakong, Sophia, Mayjay, Nisi, Eliana, Alan, Nora, Minori, Rousey, Hadassah, Paul, Clarice, Lydia, Jalen. Great job answering your questions. It's time now for our questions. I hope you were listening very carefully to today's questions because it was a very important story. So are you ready? Question number one. If someone tells you Jesus is in the park, should you go check it out? If someone tells you that Jesus is in the park, should you go check it out? Question number two. What are three signs 
of Jesus' coming? What are three signs of Jesus' coming? And question number three. Do we know the exact day and hour that Jesus is going to come? Do we know the exact day or hour that Jesus is going to come? You can send your answers to us at answers at startingwithjesus.com. And we love to see your answers. And then you can get a shout out in our weekly program at startingwithjesus.com. Today's memory verse is found in Luke 21, verse 31. When you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. When you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Know that the kingdom of God is near. When you see these things happening, you'll know, know that the kingdom of God is near. When you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. When you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. When you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. When you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of god is near when you see these things happening know that the kingdom of god is near hello welcome to activity time my name's amy and i'm michael and this is jj we're going to need in this activity scissors crayons and colored pencils or markers, a Bible, and sign templates. You can print out as many as you need at startingwithjesus.com slash activities. Let's get started. Read the signs of Jesus coming in Matthew chapter 24. Write one sign of Jesus coming on each template. I'm gonna write stars falling. Next, you can color them in. For the next part, you'll probably need help from an adult. So, Auntie Ruthie, can you come help us? Sure, I'll come help you. What would you like help with? Cutting it out. Okay, sure, I'll help you cut it out. So cut it out. Thanks, Auntie Ruthie. Great job coloring them. Now find a place you rock around your yard or in your house and hide them or place them and have another person in your family go find them and you can tell them all about the signs you colored. Have fun. Thank you for joining us today and I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you are sharing what you've learned with your friends. Now don't forget to check out our story time with Miss Kara every Sunday. You can go to startingwithjesus.com stories and see what's happening with Satu and these strange visitors on his island. I think Miss Kara left us on a bit of a cliffhanger last week so got to check out what's happening next. And don't forget also, we have our VBS program at startingwithjesus.com slash on guard. And you'll be able to see different ways that you can participate in that program and actually be part of that program. So check it out. And um, we're going to be doing some really fun things. So let's ask Jesus to be with us and thank him for being with us today. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for everything you do. I pray that you will be with us, help us to be like you, help us to remember these lessons we've learned in Sabbath school, 
and help us to share them with others. Help us to be ready when you come. I pray that you'll forgive us for our sins and help us to be like you. Help us to be missionaries wherever we go. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch. Thank you.